Welcome back to my garage. If you've seen the previous episodes, you know I've got some car trouble. It uh, doesn't want to idle anymore. So uh, today we're going to try and fix that. So let me get started by removing the old car. I was unsure what uh, size it was, but uh, there's a 26 stamped in here, so I'm pretty sure it's a 26. Except it isn't, because it's a 28. <laughs> so, not sure what the uh, logic in that is. Not sure how visible this is uh, going to be on the camera, but it says 26 right there, but it's a 28. So here's my new carb. This is a Mikuni as well, a TM28. Been trying to find some information about the differences between uh, two strokes and four stroke carbs. And apparently, if you look at uh, if you look at the number there, it says uh, 28F. 418. The 4 indicates that it's uh, that it's a 4 stroke uh, carb or that it's uh, set up for 4 stroke. The difference uh, seems to be in the, the needle jet here, the, the pipe thingy. But I've had it on my moped. Uh, 74 cc two stroke and it's been working fine but we'll see how it does on this so let me just uh, put it back together then we'll put it on okay so it's uh, all back together now uh, I changed two things compared to the two stroke setup I put the main jet from the old carb in it because they are the same size so Hopefully they'll need around the same main jet. And I put a larger idle jet in it. So uh, let's put it on and uh, see what happens. So here you can see my intake manifold. It's just a piece of straight pipe with a flange on it. So now hopefully this is going to be the correct size. <laughs> but it's not. This one is uh, 33 millimeters, the old one is 35. Let's see if the other side maybe fits better. Which it does. So it's just uh, stretched a bit on one side. This is also 33, so it's. The intake will uh, fit this car better than the. Uh, than the old one. Pretty tight fit here against the seat, but should be fine for testing. There we go, perfect. Okay, so let's see what happens. easy uh, problem solved I guess okay so for a new intake manifold I cut this uh, piece of metal out of an old bed frame nice and chromed and now I made a little flange so now I just need to 
weld it together. See how that goes. There we go. So now I just need to smoothen it a little bit. Okay, so here we go. Everything is in place. The intake manifold is aimed up a bit towards the valve now and it lowered the carb a little bit so it gave me space for the throttle cable. So that's fine now. So I think we should go for a test ride. Okay, so here you can see the, the first run. Uh, if you look here, you can see that uh, it's not really linear. I had to let, let go of the throttle uh, once or twice, so it was getting out of control. But uh, 0 to 60 was uh, 5.76 seconds, which is uh, actually worse than before. It was uh, on average 5.24 before. Uh, then on the way back, it was even worse. It was uh, 6.81, but uh, I think maybe I had a little bit of a, of a rolling start there. But these results are not usable. They are too. Too much, there's too much difference, so we're uh, going to pretty much ignore them and say well, uh, it lost some, uh, it lost some zero to sixty speed, but then ten to sixty, because at ten kilometers per hour, I actually getting some grip now. Um, it's uh, it was uh, four point seventy six. And 4.63, it's uh, 4.695, which is a little better than before, so probably about the same. Uh, I'm not sure if the carb or the new intake did anything. One thing that was interesting, um, it actually topped over 80 km per hour uh, on this uh, return run. But then I, I kept it at full throttle pretty long as well, so uh, not sure if that's a real improvement or if I just uh, stayed on the throttle longer. I think it's the second, I just kept it at full throttle a bit longer. So uh, the new flywheel is not a total failure. 
it's a lot more fun to ride now, a lot scarier and a lot snappier. Also, uh, on the second run here, it started vibrating pretty bad on the way uh, back. So I'm uh, wondering if maybe something uh, came loose. So uh, let's go check it out. It all feels tight really, so I'm not sure what the problem is, but uh, maybe Maybe it's time to uh, actually balance the flywheel. So I, I bought this uh, wheel balancer uh, thingy. It's a uh, wheel tema. It's like the Swedish uh, equivalent of uh, Harbor Freight or something, I think. Cheap tools. But. There are a couple of problems with it. First of all, the shaft is bent out of the box, so that's already useless. And then on top of that, these uh, cones, uh, you're supposed to uh, clamp things onto the shaft with these. But they are such a bad fit on the shaft, it's like almost uh, yeah, the cones themselves have almost a millimeter of run out, so it's completely useless. Waste of money. But uh, I have a plan. I have this shaft, which is actually straight. So I'm going to. Um, machine the cones to fit on this shaft and put new cones on them that are concentric with the new holes that I'm going to put in. Okay, that's one. Now we just need to uh, do the other one. I'm going to do that off camera. It's a bit of a pain in the ass to have the camera between me and the lathe. Okay, here we go. <coughs> I have my uh, flywheel on the shaft here. Let's see what the balance is like. It's a bit heavy on the on the magnet side. No surprise there. I'm going to put on some tape here, the opposite side, and then use my uh, my wheel weights uh, just to see how much uh, weight we need to add on this side. See what that does. Still heavy. Getting there. 
but not quite yet. Looks pretty good. So we need to add about this much, which is 63 grams. I need to clean my lens. Okay, so this piece is uh, 61.5, uh, but on top of that I'm going to need some bolts to attach it. I won't be using this long bolts, but uh, that's what I have at the moment. I uh, need to shorten them a bit, so I think this should uh, end up just about right. So let me uh, let me try and put this on the flywheel and uh, see what happens. Okay, so I uh, drilled and tapped some holes in the flywheel and uh, put some holes in my uh, counterweight. So I figure we start with full length on these, then shorten them as needed. So the bolts are sticking out a bit here, but it doesn't really matter, because they're not in the way for anything. So. Okay, so let's go check it out. Seems this, uh, the counterweight side is a little bit heavy now. Just wanting to go back down that way. So if I use some shorter bolts there, then it might end up perfect. I put in some shorter bolts now. Yeah. Still a bit heavy. Let me see if I can find some even shorter bolts. Okay, instead of uh, shorter bolts, I drilled a hole instead. I think this is uh, good enough, it's a lot better than before at least. Um, if I wanted it better I should have uh, larger rollers for uh, less friction. But I can't be bothered with that right now so this is gonna be good enough. I'm gonna put some Loctite on the bolts and then uh, reinstall everything. Okay so let's see if this uh, makes a difference. Feels smoother, it's still a big 
one longer, so it's always going to be shaking, but uh, it's just probably an improvement. I'm not going for a test ride right now, because uh, it's dinner time. Uh, I think that's going to be it for this one. I uh, need to think a bit what I'm going to do next, because it's um, because it would be nice if it would uh, take off nice again without trying to kill me. So, later, when, uh, when the blower is going on, I am going to need to stretch the frame a little bit. I think. So it's going to sit here somewhere, except it doesn't fit. So I'm thinking that uh, maybe I should start with uh, stretching the frame a little bit now to make space for this and to give it a bit longer wheelbase should be uh, easier to take off without uh, getting thrown off then so yep thanks for watching subscribe if you haven't done it yet leave a comment if you have a comment and uh, see you next time bye <laughs>